And also, uh, we have to put in mind to our listeners that uh, a lot of these problems that South Africa now has uh, come from European Union, directly from Great Britain, who in 1990s uh, came to South Africa with uh, its proposals of privatization, etc., etc. Yes, undoubtedly the attempt to, uh, to privatize important public sector utilities um, had a very negative effect, and one of the specific issues of this week's march was the crisis in the electricity industry, which we believe was a direct result of misguided attempts to try to turn it into a commercial entity rather than to invest money in, into it as a public utility to provide a basic service. We still also suffer from, uh, uh, from an international point of view from the unequal um, way in which world trade is conducted. In particular, the, um, the huge profits and subsidies that go to European and American farmers and food producers. Um, while uh, food producers here in South Africa are struggling to make a living because they cannot compete against heavily subsidized uh, goods flooding the market from uh, the, the wealthy countries. And we've been trying unsuccessfully so far to bring about uh, reform through the World Trade Organization so that uh, there is um, a better opportunity for uh, food production in the poorer countries, which will not only benefit the, um, the producers, the small farmers, but will also uh, start to bring down the prices of food from their current uh, very, very high levels. Only one uh, more question regarding the role of the European Union, particularly Great Britain, in the entire process of privatization and social degradation leading to economic apartheid. Uh, there is a discussion here among the activists in European Union that South Africa, its model of privatization, it, that it has been like a, an experiment so that rich nations will see whether these kind of things can work, actually. Yes. Undoubtedly, it's part of an overall strategy by the rich nations, which became very clear in the World Trade Talks at Geneva recently, that they want uh, the markets of the developing countries to be opened up to even more investment from the, the, the wealthy countries so that they can extract even bigger profits. And uh, this is uh, alarming news for the developing countries who risk becoming de-industrialized since their own um, relatively weak industrial uh, enterprises simply wouldn't be able to con compete on uh, the completely unequal terms with the big European and North American uh, companies. And uh, so that's why we're demanding that uh, there must be no reduction in uh, tariff protection and other forms of protection by the developing countries until we see major changes by the developed countries in their policy of uh, subsidizing their uh, producers, particularly in agriculture. Maybe just one more sub-question. Uh, how does all this affect the, the people's will towards uh, ANC, the governing party? Are people, uh, do they feel disappointed? Do you feel disappointed by it? They certainly feel disappointed with the government's policies over the last few years. But uh, the ANC itself has set in process a, a, um, a change in policy, which hasn't yet filtered through to government in all cases. But uh, there is clearly an ongoing campaign to uh, shift policy towards a more pro-poor and pro-working class policy. And um, Kasatu will be uh, pushing very strongly at uh, a forthcoming economic policy summit between the ANC and its alliance partners and will insist that uh, we must have policies which are in the benefit of the majority of the people and do something to reduce the levels of inequality in our society.